The dielectric constant is dimensionless, as I mentioned already. It is one in vacuum, by definition. One atmosphere, gases, typically have dielectric constants just a hair larger than one. We will most of the time assume that it is one. Plastic has a dielectric constant of three, and glass, which is an extremely good insulator, has a dielectric constant of five. If you have an external field that can induce dipoles in molecules, but there are substances, however, which themselves are already dipoles, even in the absence of an electric field. If you apply now an external field, these dipoles will start to align along the electric field. We did an experiment once with some grass seeds, perhaps you remember that. And as they align in the direction of the electric field, they will strengthen the induced electric field. On the other hand, because of the temperature of the substance, these dipoles, these molecules which are now dipoles by themselves, through chaotic motion, will try to disalign. Temperature is trying to disalign them. So it is going to be a competition on the one hand between the electric field which tries to align them and the temperature which tries to disalign them. But if the electric field is strong, you can get a substantial amount of alignment. And permanent dipoles, as a rule, are way stronger than any dipole that you can induce by ordinary means in a laboratory. And so the substances which are natural dipoles, they have a much higher value for kappa, a much higher dielectric constant than the substances that I just discussed, which themselves do not have dipoles. Water is an example, an extremely good example. The electrons spend a little bit more time near the oxygen than near the hydrogen, and water has a dielectric constant of 80. That's enormous. And if you go down to lower temperature, if you take ice of minus 40 degrees, it is even higher. Then the dielectric constant is 100. <laughs> 